Hey, old school comic reviews. Um, I just got back from C2E2. I actually really didn't plan on going. I just went on a whim, you know. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of glad I did. I got some fun stuff here. Um, I took a bunch of pictures, but you know what? I won't be able to share them with you because I'm having all kinds of equipment problems. And I'm not able to download the digital pictures I took onto my computer because of weird software issues. But I will show you some of the comments I got. Um, I didn't stay for any of the panels or any of the screenings or meeting the guests or anything like that. Um, just because, you know, I, a bunch of, I bought a bunch of comics. I wasted a lot of time. So, you know, I figured that was good enough. But just to show you some of the fun stuff I got. Uh, got them at, you know, a lot of discounts, a lot of half price off, things like that. So, you know, you can't beat it, you know. Uh, here's one thing. Marvel Super Special. Let's see here. Marvel Super Special featuring Star-Lord, Peter Quill. This is from 19, uh, 1979. Art by Gene Colan and story by Doug Munch. Unknown Worlds of Science Fiction, nice cover there, really cool, just a cool science fiction magazine that uh, Marvel Comics put out back in the, uh, back in the mid-70s or so. Savage Tales, oh Jesus, here we go, Savage Tales, it's basically an action-adventure black and white magazine that, uh, you know, lots of violent stuff in here that Marvel put out during the uh, mid-80s. Uh, what's interesting about this, this is number one, but this has a story called uh, Fifth to the First, oh, that's not it. Fifth to the First, which was, had heart, uh, art by Michael Golden. This was the precursor to the story he did, uh, or series I should say he did a few years later, called The Nam, which was basically, you know, kind of truish or based on the true uh, experiences of the guy who actually fought in Vietnam. This also this also has some nice art by uh, uh, John Severin, uh, who's an old time you know old comics veteran. Uh, what do I got here? Got him as an issue of the, the Doom Patrol. I didn't have Asia Century. I know everybody hates the Sentry. I basically bought this because it's a fake Silver Age style story, and I like old Silver Age, old Silver Age stories, so that's why I got this. You know, it's kind of an homage to those stories from the '60s and '70s. Number one, DNA Agents from Eclipse Comics, one of the earlier independent companies. Uh, this is uh, uh, written by Mark uh, Evanier who was a, a good friend of Jack Kirby's or whatever. He did a few things for this company. He did a story called, uh, a series called Crossfire. I think he did the script for uh, the Groove comic, or he did the dialogue for the Groove comic. And he did a few other things, so, you know, that's fun. Dakota North, number one. House of Java. This is an independent comic that I don't know too much about. I've never read it before, so I'll check it out here. Mar Marvel Tales. Da, 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 da. I got this because it reprints one of the very first Spider Man comics that I can ever remember reading that was an actual real, like, amazing Spider Man. This is a reprint of issue 152, where Spider Man takes on the Shocker. What's interesting about this is this issue uh, came out in um, 1981, and by that time, uh, comics were 20 pages again, even though during the mid-70s, comics were typically 17 pages, so they had to fill it in with, let's see here, they had to fill it in with other reprints of some earlier annual or something like that that shows you the uh, secrets to Spider-Man's costume and everything, and his little gadgets and how he gets around, and those web shooters, and oh, look at Spidey, he's making a parachute, oh, isn't that cool, isn't that neat, kids? And, check it out, he's making a shield, whoa, that's so far out, alright, uh, 
Cheers. Psycho Circus. They call me Dr. Love. I bought this. This is uh, Legend Holmes. This was like half price. I think I think I get this for like a dollar. I bought it just because I like the cover, even though I'm not a fan of Reggie's writing on this series. It's okay, but Christopher Priest was the guy. He really killed it. Oh, and of course, Storm doesn't look anything like this in the actual series, so take that for it. Uh, or P-Bags hate. Uh, early, early 90s kind of alternative rock comic, you know, grunge rock, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, just far off crazy stuff if you like that type of thing. Um, I would say you might be able to find here on YouTube a animated short he did for a movie called uh, Hype, which was kind of a documentary and a whole sort of alternative rock, grunge rock type thing, so whatever. Um, early Excalibur, Alan Davis Art. I've heard of this, but I never read it. Uh, Luke Cage, or Cage, Marvel Max. This is written by Brian Azzarello, who did um, 100 Bullets and Yard is by Richard Corbin. Underground alternative uh, comic book artist. Just kind of a different style than you're probably used to seeing in like, you know, Marvel comics. So it's pretty interesting. There's Luke, you know. I think this along, I think, wow, probably this along with um, uh, Brian Michael Bendis kind of using an alias and putting in the new Avengers and having a guest star and like um, uh, Daredevil when he was writing. It kind of helped Luke Cage get back to the forefront, got him out of that disco suit and everything. So that's interesting. Blue Monday from Only Press. I've read a couple of these issues. Once again, kind of a alternative rock thing about relationships and whatnot. I bought this just for laughs. Team Youngblood. Youngblood. Remember when things were extreme? Remember the 90s, man? Uh, Vampirella. I just got this for the Joe Q cover. I know we've all got our issues with Joe Q, but I really like this cover, so... Uh, Punisher Max, John Byrne, She-Hulk, can't beat it, let's see what, what else do I got, I had some other cool stuff, oh, that's an awful fight, Micronauts, eh, who remembers Micronauts, this is some more Michael Golden art, Red Sonja, Frank Thorne art, oh, Here's some crazy here. Here is got a Hellboy. Can't beat Hellboy. Mike Ignoya. Oh, but here's the stuff I'm most excited about. Amazing Adventures featuring the Inhumans and the Black Widow. You get some, let's see here. I'm pretty sure I didn't even look at it. But I'm reasonably certain that the Inhumans art. I think this is Neil Adams, but not 100% sure. Let me see here. Yes, indeed. Neil, Neil Adams art. That's badass. And the art on the Black Widow story I know is. Oh, here's some more Neil Adams. I'm messing it up. I would implore anybody that's like into spiders like, you know, um, Jim Lee or whatever. Yeah, Jim Lee is a good example, you know. Really check out, you know, Neil Adams, you know. You can see where, you know, he was an absolute, you know, influence on guys like Jim Lee and, and a lot of other uh, modern artists. Yeah, the Black Widow story is... Uh, Black Widow story is Gene Cole. I'm doing, a, I'm doing a poor job of holding this up to the camera, but this is uh, some nice Gene Cohen art here. Um, I remember this story. This has, uh, I remember reading a reprint of the story when I was really young that was in Marvel Treasury Edition uh, Holiday Grab Bag. And it had something to do with 
uh, some hippie guy who turned out to be a con guy. Whoa, there's someone on here. There we go. He turned out to be some sort of con man, and you know, some kid falls in with him, and at first they think they're being you know, cool hippie people, but then you realize this guy is up to some no good stuff, and and somebody dies at the end. It was like really, when I was really young, I thought it was really moving and tragic at the time. Okay, here's the stuff I'm most excited about. Man thing, giant size man thing number two, huh? Huh? Number one. And then I couldn't find number three, but I did get giant size man thing number four. And this also has the uh, Frank Runner uh, art on the um, Howard to Duck backup. So this was, a, I was really happy to get this. I tell you the truth, you know, once I got this, I was done. I was ready to go. You know what I mean? Anything else is anticlimactic. Yeah, celebrities, free movies, bah! Giant size man thing. That's where it's at, buddy. Um, one of these days, maybe I'll tell you about the uh, secret message that's hidden in the artwork for the Howard the Duck story. Okay, that's about it. Like I said, I had some cool pictures of some of the cosplayers and uh, the crowds and some of the things they had there. They had, um, you know, tattoo artists, a lot of independent artists, a lot of uh, local people just, you know, uh, out there showing their things. And everybody was really nice. I always like it to go to these things and see, like, uh, you know, families, you know, uh, moms and dads with their kids, uh, like seeing teenagers there. A lot of boyfriend, girlfriend couples there, and they obviously look like they enjoy the whole fantasy genre together as opposed to, you know, some guy just dragging his girl along and she's just going along with it for whatever. Okay, um, that's about it. Um, hey, if you have been to C2E2 and have some, you know, thoughts you want to share or, you know, some photos you can uh, share because I can't share mine, uh, you know. Thanks, you know, let me know, leave whatever comments you want, and uh, you have a good one. Thanks.